Okay, um, this video is basically a primer on how to manually create a watershed um, in QGIS, <clears throat> um, specifically for smaller areas um, for which we can use the USGS rational method. So this method generally is used for drainage areas that are less than 640 acres and generally for those areas that it's more just overland flow um, <clears throat> specifically to a, a drainage point um, not necessarily through a stream channel or something like that so a couple of the things we're going to do aren't 100 percent necessary but it just helps to kind of visualize some of this stuff so here we've got our digital elevation model our DEM um, <clears throat> and this is kind of the base way QGIS brings it in it's just uh, black and white um, which sometimes is harder to see a little bit some of the definitions um, so one of the things just preliminarily I like to do is kind of play with that coloring a little bit um, so we'll come under symbology and just come to single band pseudo color and now we can kind of change the colors a little bit I like um, the kind of red to blue but I like to invert it so you click on this little down arrow and invert the color rim that way the blue are the lower areas and the reds kind of the higher areas um, and I want to make this a little bit more <clears throat> um, clear so I like to do um, actually the quantiles um, and then just bump up the classes like a bunch so say to 20 and just apply that and then now you kind of just see a little bit more clear of like what's going on. So the more red, the higher the hills, hill slopes and elevation. And then you can see coming down into the creek areas. Um, so that's just one way to visualize. So what we're actually looking for is basically what's the watershed for this drainage point. There's a couple roads coming in here um, and we want to see basically how much water um, is coming to this point to see be able to size a pipe for going across this road um, so another helpful thing um, when figuring this out is to convert this DEM to contours um, to, again to help visualize what the watershed area might be um, so we have our DEM and to do that you come up you can either obviously type it in the processing toolbox um, or just come up to raster extraction and contour <clears throat> so here just a few things obviously our input layer is going to be the DEM um, and this DEM is in elevation of feet so that's important to know so the interval between contour lines I want a one foot um, interval so I want a contour line for every one foot of elevation you need to make sure on this one what your DEM is in. Most of the time when you get them from USGS, they're in meters. So I think I have another video showing how to use the raster calculator to change that from meters to feet. But this one's in feet, so we want one foot. Um, the attribute name is elevation. It's the attribute <clears throat> that we want it to use. Um, and then basically we're going to create our contour file. Um, so I'll save it, save to a file, and I've already got one created here, but I'll just name it contours2, um, and then we want to open it output after we run it. So we'll run that. Okay, so now we have a contour map <clears throat> at one foot intervals so I have a hard time seeing this red color um, so I want to just change that to black so we're gonna go to the layer property symbology um, and then we'll just scoot this over to black um, but another thing I want to do just to help in the diagnosis of the watershed is to label each contour um, with the elevation so Go to labels, single labels, 
and we want to change the value field to the elevation okay um, and we'll hit OK so now we have black contour lines which again show up really well against the DEM and now we have the values for each one so if we look at this point here again we're looking right about in here it's pretty flat um, most of this area right in here but you can see there's a big hill coming up behind it <clears throat> and this is where it does get a little confusing um, to manually draw them in um, and there's a few things we'll need to look for um, specifically within this um, and one thing that will help is to turn on a background image um, so I'm going to turn off the DEM for a second and I have a plug in here it's called quick map services um, I can post another video if necessary on how to download that um, but in general you just you can go to plugins manage install plugins and then you can just um, it'll pop up here and you can just type it in um, and so you can just install the plugin and then what this does if you click on it there's tons of different um, data sources that it, it includes um, and I prefer to use the Google ones um, generally but there's also Esri um, but you can go to labels roads satellite um, and I like to use the satellite image and well okay so this is one thing I forgot to mention um and it's hard to do and I'm really not sure why it does it but the Google satellite imagery and I think it works for all of these um, let me see if the Esri works um, satellite. yeah it doesn't come in so I'm gonna remove these layers so I apologize but I have the the coordinate system I'm using here is an Oklahoma State Plane coordinate system. Um, for some reason, the map services doesn't really like that one, and it doesn't understand it very well. So it really doesn't ever show up when we do it. And I forgot to mention <laughs> I forgot about that earlier, but. If you have data in the UTM coordinate zones, things like that, um, it always shows up. So one thing you can do is either turn on the maps first before you bring in data or just bring in a random file you have but in, say, UTM coordinates, um, and then it'll pop up, and then you can bring in your other data that's in the Oklahoma State Plane coordinates. Um, since that's not popping up, that's okay. Um, we'll still figure it out. Um, but knowing this area, we'll turn the DEM back on just to view. <clears throat> so we have this big hill slope here. Here's a pond. Um, here's a pond. And we have a little creek channel coming in here. And again, these, these are roads here. So that kind of helps us guide. So we're looking for everything coming to this point. Um, we know obviously there's going to be overland flow going down to this creek. Um, we know this pond's going to catch a lot. Um, and obviously we know <clears throat> because there's a roadway here, the water's not going to keep flowing over the road. It's going to hit the road and come down. And the same thing over here. But one thing we do need to kind of look for is any cross drains that may affect it coming down the roadside. Um, it doesn't really appear on this the west side that there's anything going on um, basically if it's not going in this creek it's kind of pulling down here um, but if you look here you can see obviously you have a hill here and it's rolling back into that pond but if you look at this contour coming in here and you know the roadways right here it appears that the way this pinches in there's probably a cross drain here. And obviously if we had the uh, aerial imagery, we'd be able to tell that for sure. Um, but 
I'm pretty sure there is one, so we'll go with that assumption for now. So, what I want to do now is create a watershed <clears throat> for this area. So I need to create a new vector layer. I'm going to go to layer, create layer, new shapefile layer. And I want a polygon layer, um, and I'm actually going to set it in the project CRF, um, which is Oklahoma State Plain North. And then I will save it in the same area. We'll just call it watershed. Um, and hit OK. So now we have this generic area. And what I like to do, especially when I'm creating these, um, is make it just an outline. Um, that way I can see what I'm doing as I go a little bit better. Um, so I want to turn on the editing, toggle editing for this area. And then now we come over here um, to the add polygon feature button and click that. And now we just kind of have a cursor that we can start creating the polygons. So obviously this, again, this is our point here kind of at this intersection. So I'm basically going to start there. And now I want to just, I know it flows down this road. So I'm going to come up here but you can see kind of where the contours break and everything's kind of going into that creek. Um, so we have some hill slopes in here and this is probably our kind of center point at which to radiate all this out from. But you can see generally the flow here is coming down. Um, you can see how there's kind of a little ditch that probably runs through here that carries a lot of the flow to that creek. Um, but most of this is kind of rolling down through here. So even though this is coming, it's gonna eventually kind of curve back. So I'm gonna go to about right, probably about right in here, and we'll just kind of start following in with the contours. and kind of looking at the flows where they go and this again this is not kind of an exact science um but it, it, it does give you kind of a good representation of how to do it so now we have a peak point here so we're probably coming up here everything even though it's coming down this hill is going to kind of roll or it's going to roll down into this pond so we'll kind of come up here and we'll call it about there. I'm going to pan over. And you can see, again, everything here is going to kind of drain down into that pond and then go through that cross drain. So it's obviously not going to carry down this roadway. So we need to kind of make it where you can kind of see this dividing line here of everything that's coming to the pond or over so we'll just kind of walk it down here to about the roadway and i think that'll be good so we'll right click um we don't need an id if there's only one watershed so hit ok and now we have our watershed area and you can kind of see it in general that this is a, a unique watershed just purely for this area um, so we want to save the edits um, and then we'll turn off the editing for just a second. So now we have our watershed area. Um, for the rational method to determine um, time of concentration and flows, there's a couple other pieces of information we need. Specifically, um, the length of channel flow, or in this case overland flow, um, because there's not a defined channel here. Um, and also the slope of that flow. So what we can do here is just take a look at our area and an easy way to calculate the length is kind of pick, sometimes it's the furthest point, but sometimes basically it's from the highest point to the lowest point. So right here, this 573, 
is kind of our lowest point or our highest point, excuse me. And so we want to have just an average flow um, amount. So we can come up here to measure line tool and you can change um, the units. We want it in feet. And we're gonna go from here and it's probably not a straight flow we want to probably bring it over here and then down um, would be kind of an average flow distance. So we click there and so we have a total of 1384 um, feet. Okay, and now we know our high point and low point. And since we have our contour, um, we don't need to get much more specific than single um, feet elevation because we have enough of an elevation difference. Um, so basically our high point is just 573 feet and our low point here um, is basically gonna be 545. And so that's the generic information we need. Um, the last thing that we would need is the area of this polygon. And there are two ways to do that. One, we can go back to this measure tool and we can measure area. Um, we want it in acres, I believe. Um, and we don't have to be exact here, but we can basically just trace this same polygon and just kind of work our way through that and well there is a vertex there here and basically right there so that's basically 33 acres um, so we can just mark that and go from there um, the other way to do this um, is actually calculating the actual um, area of the of the feature. And so what we can do is go back to our polygon feature, open up the attribute table, which I'll bring over here. And there's really nothing in here right now. Um, we want to turn on editing, toggle editing. And if you come over here, um, so we can either do a new field or we can just open the field calculator, which I like to do. And so here we've got checked, we wanna create a new field. Um, I'm just gonna call it area. And because our units are in feet um, for our projection, this would be in feet squared. So that's one thing to watch for. Um, and again, we want decimal numbers because we want real numbers. Um, but the one thing um, that's a little bit more confusing QGIS that whenever you calculate a field, it's based on the coordinate system that you're in at the moment. So you can't specifically set, I want it in acres or feet squared or meter squared or anything like that. It just uses um, whatever the measurement from that coordinate system would be. Um, so you really need to know which coordinate system you're in before you do that. And that's, Yep, so pretty much that's it. So what we want, and we come over here, and we want geometry. And so we want this dollar sign area. Um, okay, so we'll double click it. And I believe that should be it. And we'll hit okay. All right, so now we have the area in feet squared, which again, we'll need to convert to acres for our rational method equation, but that's that's a very simple calculation. Um, and that basically gives us all the information we'll need um, for the rational method analysis. So that's kind of a quick and dirty way um, of calculating watersheds within QGIS. Um, in another video, I'll show basically the same method, but um, using AutoCAD Civil 3D. So, thanks.